Moving forward on the N249, you're going to want we're going to start at the top, work our way down. First, you have the metal carry handle. Now, although the handle part itself is actually plastic, the beam here is all metal. Um, to change the position of the handle, you're going to you're going to push the assembly towards the back, towards the butt socket of the gun. And you have technically three positions. You have the one that you just saw, which is closed, and you have all the way to the side. Um, we really only use the closed and the middle position, and it, it is capable of carrying it. We've seen no stress fractures or any, any sign that there would be any breakage, um, and it does carry it quite well. It's pretty balanced, and um, we like it. I mean, it's, it's actually very convenient, especially because it is such a heavy gun, and it gives a very you know, convenient handhold. Of course, it, it emulates the real steel quite well, so uh, kudos again to NK for doing that. Now you'll notice this barrel shroud here. It serves, as, as far as we can tell in the airsoft version, no functional purpose and pops right off. Um, as you can see, it exposes the outer barrel, which appears to be aluminum. Um, this assembly here is actually all plastic with the exception of these very thin, appear to be stainless steel metal tabs. Um, one thing we did find that was nice is because it's a pretty long gun, uh, as far as attaching a laser, which we use fairly frequently, it is a convenient place to run the laser cords right through these channels here. Um, it, it actually worked out quite well for us. Putting it back on, you'll notice there are a couple little feet that actually attach to the little pin just under the front sight. Pushing it down, you just apply a little bit of pressure and friction holds it in with those, those little clips. Now, I'm going to get to the barrel removal in just a sec. Before we do, I want to show you the battery compartment. This was actually another point of a uh, little bit of irritation. Um, if we had to, to take points off, it would be for the handle, the, the, the um, small chamber under the handle, and this. And we'll show you what we mean. I'm going to put it on the side so you can get a better view. There are a couple places, tiny places, but I'm going to try to show them to you. Now first, this is where one of the tabs attaches to the uh, underside of the gun. This is not a very good way to attach it, in our opinion. It feels solid at first, but it got knocked out of place easily, and we found the foregrip is popping off in the middle of, uh, of combat. We're going to show you what we mean. To access the battery part port, you basically just pull down and slide it off. Now, if you can see, all that's holding the rear portion on is this, is this tab, and, and that's it. Um, no pin, nothing. The front portion is equally uh, flimsy. Again, just a tiny metal tab. Can't be much more than a quarter of an inch at most uh, in terms of its width. And as far as sticking out from the, the metal portion here, and, and basically all you do once your battery is in place, you put the front portion in first, and then you'll see here. Hopefully, again for the camera, it might be difficult to see, but you'll notice that this first portion is wider than the rearward portion. And basically, you slip the tab in. This is also difficult to see. I'm going to try to show it to you. Remember, we, we, we mentioned that front foot. It has to be moved forward to fully engage. So again, it's kind of hard to see. But right now, this, this um, cover is not fully secured. So the tab is actually filling the little slot into which it would normally push. I'm going to show you how it, how it works. You have to pop it, and you'll hear that click, and then move it forward. So supposedly, it's now locked into place. But as I said, it can easily, easily pop out just with a simple bump, and it did. So not so thrilled with that. But again, a little bit of ingenuity can fix the problem, whether you put a pin in yourself or whether you decide to put some tape around it. Not a very pretty option, but there it is. While we've got it at this angle, it's a good time to show you the different the different mounting uh, options. Um, I may have slipped up earlier in the video and called this a tripod. Of course, it is in fact a bipod. Um, but this lug here is what you would use if you had some kind of tripod mount. It, it um, apes the real version quite well. And you know, if you have a tripod or you just want to look like you could use one, that's what this is for. And of course, storage of the bipod is quite uh, easy. It, it doesn't lock in very securely, but then we don't really feel that it has to. We're going to show you right now. These feet are adjustable. There are three positions. We end up using the second, or the first, the most. The third we only really use for demonstration purposes in the video. 
and um, adjusting it sometimes a little bit of a hassle because these little metal tabs sometimes get stuck. But once you've got them at their lowest setting, they're little buttons, by the way, just so you can see. You just depress the button and then watch your fingers because there are these little metal pieces that will move and sometimes you can get a little nick, no big deal. Just be careful. Anyway, you squeeze it and it is spring-loaded. And then you slide it in there and because it's spring-loaded, it'll, it'll more or less stay in place when it should. Getting it out is a real breeze. You, just, you can just drop it and it, for the most part, will get to where it needs to be. Um, you will want to be careful, of course, when, you, when you're actually trying to use the bipod. Make sure, again, with the camera, make sure the top portion of the bipod links up with the bottom portion. If you don't, you'll have one of these situations and then you can bend some metal. You'll want to do that. It'll also go forward and, again, same kind of problem. If you're trying to use it for support, it might not work. Now, when it's forward, for some reason, getting it into the proper position is easier. Who knows why? It's just the way it was designed. I'm going to turn it on. It's turn it upright, and you can see what we're talking about here. Now, there isn't, from what we could find, there is no method of tightening up the bipod once it's out. It's pretty loose, but it does give the shooter a pretty good range of motion, and that's probably what they were going for, from what we could tell. And that's frankly what we needed when we were firing, um, especially because we weren't using pre-prepared positions, you know, you're going to slap this thing on a pile of wood or, you know, on a dirt mound or sandbank, something like that, and you're going to need to have a very good range of motion, and it provides just that. So overall, we thought it was a pretty pretty cool design. It's all metal, again, and, and that really impressed us. The, the foregrip here, though, is plastic, and um, the, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the barrel shroud is plastic, but this is metal, this metal, 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 metal. The front post, well, it's not a post site technically by itself. It does have a post site in the top here, but this whole site assembly is metal. Um, it's a beefy gun, and you'll feel it when you're holding it. This device here has no function from what we can tell as far as airsoft goes. Um, it, it pivots, and to get it to turn, you actually push inward on the device. We're sure it has obviously some real function, but for airsoft purposes, doesn't do a doggone thing from what we can tell anyway. Okay, so for those of you who always like to remove your orange tips, you're not going to be able to remove this one unless you chip the paint off. We never recommend that you do that. We personally leave them on. Everyone we play with leaves them on for safety reasons. Sure, you can see that orange orange tip, you know, when you're skirmishing, but it's just it's great insurance to have. So that's our two bits. Um, if you if you were trying to remove it, I mean, it'll be news to us. We'd appreciate an email because we haven't been able to discover how to do it without actually sawing through the metal itself or painting it, neither of which we're willing to do. Um, it's kind of cool, you have these forward pointing ports, so in the real steel, of course, that would help to disperse the muzzle flash a little bit, but of course it has no real function here. 